stand and let's welcome the man of God. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy. He inhabits, he lives in, he inhabits and lives in the praises of his people. I bless you, O oh Lord. You're the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lily of the Valley, the Great I Am, the everlasting Father. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. He's still the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still the same. I, hallelujah. I've just got to tell you a little something that just happened. Uh, many of you have heard in America the storm that we had. Katrina and Rita followed her. Two storms to hit. And we poor North Americans don't know how to handle crisis too well. And uh, my son and I were some of the first to get into the New Orleans area. Um, after it hit, we had saints where we pastored many people we loved. And, of course, the Marcellis and others in that region were affected. I literally went to areas four or five days after the storm where people uh, were starving, literally could not find food. It was amazing to see that in the United States. One of the men that was one of our staff pastors when I was senior pastor, he was our worship pastor. In the last two years I was there, the Lord called him to take a church in Mississippi. It was in a little town called Poplarville, Mississippi. It's uh, You probably never heard of it, but it was on the news a lot. It's one of the first places that George Bush showed up to after the storm because it was almost completely devastated. Brother Bill Davison was pastor in that church. Now, I've been preaching a lot about what Jesus has done and what he can do, but I just feel like talking about what he is doing right now. Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I, I, told, a, I, I told a story years ago, and I, I confirmed it, and I've preached it. I don't know if I preached it here, but I've preached it about everywhere, about one of our African pastors when, during 1985, the African country of Ghana was in a severe famine. And I went there to preach a conference. Now, some of you looking at me, I know I look real young. Everybody say, Brother Sue, you look so young. You're so handsome. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I know I'm in denial, but I appreciate that. <laughs> because February the 12th, I will have been preaching 24 years. February the 12th. In 1985, we went to Ghana, and they told me about a pastor. And he come up to me. There was this little pastor. His Bible looked like it was half in empty. And he was taking his Bible, and he was literally shaking his Bible in my face. And he was talking in a dialect. I couldn't understand what he was saying. And one of the elders came over and began to interpret, this is the man I'd heard about. And I may have told you the story, how that in the famine his people were starving, and the witch doctor challenged him and said, let's decide whose God is God. And he was praying, and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, I'm the bread of life. And so he took a page of the Bible and tore it out and put it in a pan, put the pan in the oven. And when they took the pan out of the oven, it was bread. I think my jet lag just left me. <laughs> and and I, I met him and he, he said, I think it happened about six months. He began to take pages out of his Bible. They would tear one page out and then they would tear the page in pieces and give it to different families. And they would take and put it in the pan. And his entire church ate on the word of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. But... <laughs> But that's Africa. Miracles always happen in Africa. Almost everything I hear, every revival, everybody says to the Philippines or Africa. Well, I don't mind them having miracles, but I like to have them other places too. So, so I preach that. But you know, sometimes when you're a faith preacher, I guess I'm a faith preacher. When you preach and tell testimonies and stuff, these people just don't believe you. They just look at you like, oh yeah, you're just telling stories. You just get paid to make up stories. My son asked me a few weeks ago, he said, Dad, were you telling the truth or were you just preaching? <laughs> and sometimes the enemy will attack you. So I get a phone call like I tell you about. I told that story and pastored our church with that kind of faith. This young man now is pastoring in Mississippi. He calls and says, now he's from the south. Now I'm from the south, but he's from really from the south. And he talks like this. He said, Pastor, I got to tell you something. That means, Pastor, I need to tell you something. Okay. He said, 
He started telling me that right after the storm, for three days, not one policeman, the military, no one could get to their church. And what they did, their freezers were thawing out all the food. They, they, they couldn't keep the food. The electricity was off the phone, no cell phones, no anything they couldn't get. So he said, what we did is I called the people that we could find. I sent people out to get them. I said, bring your food to the church. We'll just start cooking all the food that's spoiling, all the beef and fish and all this stuff. We'll just start cooking. And the whole community started coming. And people started, for three days, they cooked and fed people by the hundreds. They cooked. When the police got there, there were policemen, he said, that hadn't eaten in two days. And they were feeding the police and feeding a miracle but at the end of the third day he said about midnight they hadn't heard from anybody i couldn't get a hold of them he did he said i didn't know if the rapture had come i didn't know if people were dead or alive i didn't know what happened so he said i went to the back of the church and he had a gas can and he said i poured the last of the gas in the generator and i sit down and begin to weep and i said now lord jesus when i get up from here i've got to walk in there and smile I've got to walk in and say, praise God, God's on the throne and everything's wonderful. But if you ever told everybody how good it's going to be and inside your heart was breaking. And he said, Lord, I got to hear from you for myself because I don't know if my kids are going to starve. I don't know what's going to happen. At that point, they didn't know what happened to the rest of America. They didn't know if New Orleans existed. They didn't know what was going on. They said, we need something from the Lord. And he said, pastor, that's how he said, pastor, when I got up, to get up and pick up the gas can. When I reached down and picked up the lid, I had just poured, remember, three days, the last of the gas in the generator. When I went to pick up the can, the can was full of gas. Oh, I feel like running and dancing and leaping. See, if he can turn water into wine, he can turn the Bible into bread. But if he can do that in Africa, he can take an empty container and can put gas in it because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's things like that happening all over the world, and you ought to give God praise about it. I don't know what you're going through, but he's able to make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah! Oh, let's rejoice one more time in the Lord. I bless the name of Jesus. I bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles and would go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. Ooh, I feel better after that. Do you? See, I like it when it happens. The people I know are telling the truth. I know this guy. I know him too well. He wouldn't make up something. And revival has broke out in their church. And during that crisis they baptized 34 people in jesus name amen because of what god's doing in that community now i i have come i believe this weekend in the holy ghost um and i'm going to need you to help me spread the word it is very important that people be here sunday morning and monday night and tuesday as much as possible because i will be continuing basically one flow in the spirit i'm going to start by preaching tonight preaching t-r-e-a-c okay teaching is telling preaching is yelling <clears throat> i'm going to yell while i tell and i'm going to call it preaching then sunday we're going to preach i'm just going to yell <laughs> sunday we're going to preach english service and filipino service praise god hallelujah we're going to have time uh, Sunday, but but I feel the Lord's giving me a prophetic word Sunday and Monday night that really, if you don't get it, you're going to miss something going in Tuesday because I'm going to be teaching on spiritual warfare, demons and angels, be teaching on the balance of how to operate in the supernatural and yet be practical at the same time, not get all flaky and all that kind of stuff, but we're dealing with all those different areas, but you've got to tie it into. Now, tonight... I'm really just here to help somebody. It may not be everybody, but I hope it's somebody. Uh, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, chapter 14. I honor your staff pastors. I honor all the leaders here. Many of you have become my close friends. And I do remember uh, Pastor Timothy's ordination. I was about to die. Sister Sandra rushed me immediately after that to the hospital. And she was kind. They were all laughing at me. These little nurses coming. hee, hee, hee. Finally, I asked one, I said, what's so funny? She said, you're a very big man. <laughs> I didn't realize I was that big on this little bitty table, little bitty thing. <laughs> but uh, thank God I feel better. 
chapter 12, now concerning spiritual gifts, bread.